Star Wars 7x7 episode 2156. There's something remarkable about the structure of The Rise of Skywalker that's different from the structure of Return of the Jedi. And it seems that J.J. Abrams got the idea for it from Ryan Johnson to some degree, who in turn got the idea from it from The Empire Strikes Back. Punch it! Hey Rebel Razor, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy. And thank you so much for joining me for it. So, we've been talking about The Rise of Skywalker and comparing it to Return of the Jedi, two movies at the ends of their respective trilogies. And as we've been talking about things like themes and structure and all that stuff, there's something I wanted to flag that I think is rather remarkable considering that you know, it had Return of the Jedi to some degree as a blueprint to work from in its way. And that is the number of times that our protagonist and antagonist actually confront each other in The Rise of Skywalker. So if you think back to Return of the Jedi, Luke and Vader barely interact with each other until near the end of the movie, until nearly to the point where we get in the third act, right? There is that moment where Vader senses Luke's arrival on Endor, and, you know, there's like, oh, there's a little something there. And then there's, of course, the scene on Endor when Luke surrenders to Imperial forces and he and Vader meet for the first time since the, you know, tragedy that happened on Bespin. And then... Part of the giant climax of Return of the Jedi includes intercutting with scenes of Vader and Luke having their final lightsaber battle. Now, that is in complete contrast to what J.J. Abrams and Chris Terrio do with The Rise of Skywalker. It starts with Kylo Ren trying to reopen the Force bond between him and Rey. Near the beginning of the movie, this is after he has had his encounter with Palpatine and while Rey is running through the training course on Agent Kloss, right? So that's their initial reconnection, if you will. But then there's a force bond scene while Rey is on Pasana, and that, of course, is how Kylo Ren actually learns that she's on Pasana. Then they have a an interaction and a fight of sorts on Pasana, right? When you know she faces him down in his screaming Tie Fighter, and she blows it up, and then they have the fight over the shuttle, right? So there's you know a lot of interaction there already. Then, when the action shifts to Kijimi, there's another Force Bond scene when she's on the Star Destroyer and he's down on Kijimi, and then he ends up saying, oh yeah, I'll be right there, and they end up having yet another face-off in the hangar bay of that Star Destroyer. And then we have their final confrontation, if you will, that starts in the wreckage of the Emperor's throne room from Death Star 2 and continues out into the external part of the wreckage on Kef Beer. Finally, of course, you know, that confrontation ends. It's the last time that they are together as enemies, and then we get them together as allies at the very end, and they spend, you know, a good chunk of time working as allies, basically in the same fashion as they were working together in The Last Jedi after Kylo Ren killed Snoke. And I think about this in terms of Return of the Jedi and wonder to myself, man, what if Luke and Darth Vader had had a lot more screen time together? What if they'd had more interactions with each other leading up to that grand climactic battle? I feel like that would have been really exciting and interesting. <laughs> but, you know, that's, of course, Monday morning quarterbacking and Return of the Jedi is just fine as is. But circling back to what I said at the top, the whole notion of these interactions, J.J. Abram has Ryan Johnson to thank for this on a couple of different levels. First of all, the fact that Ryan Johnson established the Force Bond to begin with. All right, so that's number one. But the second level of it was the notion of physical contact and actual tangible results happening across the force bond, okay? So when it was you know, some of the water from the rains and splashing in Octo getting onto Kylo Ren's face and, you know, him looking at the, the water on his gloves to them being able to touch across the force bond, right? Like that started off 
you know, very particular usefulness for the force bond that J.J. Abrams just blew up for all intents and purposes for, you know, Kylo Ren to reach through the force bond and rip that necklace off of Rey, which allowed him to track her to Pasana. And, you know, happens again later when they're fighting on, you know, through the force bond on Kajimi, they're fighting. Lightsabers are actually clashing through this force bond, which is insane. And the... You know, Vader's mask pedestal getting smashed and, you know, the berries from the market getting, you know, thrown all over the floor of Kylo Ren's nice, cool room. And then, of course, the lightsaber handoff, which leads to the perfect Han Solo-esque shrug from Ben Solo. Yeah, all of that set up for J.J. Abrams and Chris Terrio by Ryan Johnson. But funnily enough, that was actually set up for Ryan Johnson in its way by Irving Kirshner in The Empire Strikes Back. And for that, you have to cast your mind back to those scenes after Luke was rescued by Lando and Leia hanging from the bottom of Bespin, and the fact that Vader and Luke are able to have conversations across space and time with each other. Now, that doesn't go so far as to creating physical interaction, but this is the first time that we actually see communication can happen across you know, time and space with the Force between two powerful Force users. And it seems like the explanation for why it's even more powerful between Kylo Ren and Rey has to do with this whole dyad business, right? So Luke and Vader slash Anakin were not a dyad, but they were related. So, you know, maybe that helped things along, but being a dyad in the Force and that being something that hasn't been seen in forever. Well, you know, I guess with dyads, maybe you can do a little bit more <laughs> with the force in terms of what can be passed in that interaction. And circling back on our discussion about themes in The Rise of Skywalker, their multiple confrontations really reveal to us that redemption is not a central theme of the movie because in none of those interactions is Rey doing anything that suggests that there is redemption available for Kylo Ren. It's possible, I suppose, that she senses what Leia was trying to do in reaching out to Kylo slash Ben in that moment before she ran him through with the lightsaber, but yeah, all she did was, you know, heal him and then say, yeah, I wanted to take your hand, but Ben's hand. But she didn't say, hey, you know, be Ben now, be with me, right? She just said, yeah, I just wanted Ben's hand, but, you know, I assume you're still not Ben, so see ya, and takes off in his ship. But the fact that they had so many interactions throughout the course of this movie, I really do feel like that was a really awesome decision by... Terrio and Abrams, you know, to have them on screen together, whether it was literally or force bond figuratively on screen together, and structurally different from what happened in Return of the Jedi, I definitely think it was a great choice overall. That's my take on it, at least. I'd love to hear what you think. By all means, chime in on social for the episode wherever you see it posted, or at home base for the show at sw7x7.com and let me know what you think. That's going to do it for our episode today. Thank you so much for joining me for it, as always. And may the curve be flattening for you, wherever in the world you may be. This is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox. It is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other related Star Wars items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited or their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2019 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.